it's time for another unboxing of some new toys. I got the new Cyclotron lights from Fruto Technology. So this is a set of four basically custom jewels. So if you are familiar with NeoPixels, there's a seven LED set that's called the NeoPixel Jewel. Well, this is a five LED jewel. On the back side here, we have VCC or VDD, uh, DI and ground on this side on the left. So that's data in. And then on this side, we've got ground DO for data out and VDD, which is our continued uh, voltage. Basically, what we need to do with these is um, obviously no wires on these. I need to uh, fit these into or dry fit these into the back of my uh, cyclotron shell and get some wires connecting them. I'm gonna hook them up in the same order in which the uh, original LEDs were run. As you can see, I've got a ton of tape on the inside of my lid. This is because I did the uh, 40 pixel LED ring. I'm gonna work on taking this up first. Yeah, so in here I have a NeoPixel Jewel mounted inside my, uh, inside the end filter that has been drilled out and goes into uh, this setup. You can see the heat shrink tubing where I've spliced wires together. Uh, I'll probably have to cut that and re-splice them again uh, to the new jewels, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The side of the lid that you're going to be concerned with is here where the uh, these pogo pins are called pogo pins because they just bounce up and down so ignoring for a minute the pixel ring which is attached let's assume this is the first time that you've taken this apart these four wires coming in those come from the pogo pins on the lid and basically if you take a flat screwdriver <laughs> right there um, it will literally flip that right out. So there's your diffusion uh, diffusion lens. I'm going to go ahead and pop the rest of these out. Right. Maybe hopefully not flipping them all out onto the floor. As I just did. Oops. Lost control of that one. And this one I've definitely popped out before because as you can see, I had soldered on to the data out side of that uh, final jewel and sent this uh, data and power off to my end filter light. All right. We're gonna basically do the same thing with these new jewels. But before we get going, what I wanna do is each of these runs in an arc. I just want to put a small, small bit of marking here, just to sort of trace that with my hand. So if I start there, sort of follow through. I, I just want registration marks so that I can get as close to how the HasLab equipment was set up. So I'm just trying to follow with my hand the same arcing pattern that the original LEDs have. And that's going to be crucial once I get the new ones in because I'm going to want them to follow the same sort of flow. And for the most part, I should be able to eyeball it but it's nice to have some markings that sort of follow the manufacturer's intended path. They're not exactly diagonal because it is an arc. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to follow what was sort of intended by the manufacturer. All right, so now I've got my registration marks. Once I put these jewels in, yeah, there we go. I should be able to get the same, line it up, and get the same arc. And you see how that registration mark helps me. Here, let me do it. One that doesn't have wires in the way. 
There we go. But you see, I, that way I don't put it in like that. I'm actually lining it up with my little marks so I follow the same path. And that way, once these are in place, I can just put a dab of hot glue there and we're done. Uh, these are hot welded in. Should be able to just snip the tops of the welds off. These are just a pair of flush cut wire nips. Now what I really want to see is this one here. So this is the one where everything comes in and terminates. And it's obvious that we have four wires coming into this. And what I want to do is double check the brown wire is basically it's a second ground. But what it's going to do is this is part of the detection for when the uh, lid has been opened. So the way this works is we've got uh, voltage. I believe this first pin is your uh, power. So uh, five volts here. This is your data pin. So that's going to control the LEDs. Then you've got a ground and then you've got the second ground. What the second ground is going to do is if this ground is connected to this one, the lid is shut. As soon as you break that ground, meaning you've removed the lid, you've broken that circuit, and now we detect that the lid has been opened. So we're basically opening a switch. Now, how does this work here? Well, we're gonna find out. So let's try and get this guy out of here. And there we go, okay. So this is the first time I've done this. I haven't seen what these actually look like on the other side. And it would appear that uh, basically the grounds are tied together, which is kind of what I thought. So all of these, this is a consumer device. Uh, this is the same idea as the Fruto um, chips here. Every single one of these is identical. They're all manufactured exactly the same. So, and that makes sense because you want to keep your production costs as low as possible. So you want everything to be uniform. So every single one of these has data in, voltage in, ground in, and out. And if you look at these other ones, they all have this one little solder pad that's not used. Now this makes sense. That's the solder pad that is also on the ground rail. And you can kind of see it here. This entire back piece, let's see, where's my... If we follow the trace, this is all part of the same trace right here. This whole big thing right here is our ground. And both of these are tied together. Both of these being the brown and the black pin. I may just solder on a little jumper right here because I don't think there is anything special. All right, so I got my multimeter. I'll get a tone if I get... So tone if the wires are continuous. So let's touch these two. Yep. And just to make sure, yeah, nothing else, nothing else beeps. It's only those last two. So why, why they did this, I am not quite sure. You would think that it'd be just as easy if they basically solder these to the same trace here and they're connected. Why didn't they just connect these traces? So anyways, I'm going to take the chance here and I'm going to snip my black wire off this ground. I'm gonna snip this one off that second ground. And what I'll do is I will get a small piece of wire and just jumper between those two. So I've made a tiny little jumper and I am going to attach that down here. Basically, I've got some solder on this already. I just need it to melt. Into an existing joint. There we go. All right. So that's already there, or that's. All right. And then I've got a second solder joint right here. This might be a little funky because we've got a glue, glue blob. So 
I'm going to melt the glue blob. There we go. Okay. So I basically jumpered from ground to ground. So we've already established that the pogo pin here just needs a ground connection. So, okay. That looks good. So let's see what we've got here. Let's try and put this back on. Yeah, there we go. All right, so by jumpering these two pins on the back side, this was the brown wire, this is the black wire. There's my jumper right there. A little messy, but it works. That gives us the ability to turn or to uh, detect when the lid is on or off. That's it, that's all that needs to do. So with that in place, now we turn our attention to uh, getting these new pixels installed. What I will probably do is continue with green as data and I will switch to red for positive. And that's uh, as we hook up the rest of these. And we're gonna work on getting these attached to this. And we have some very, very thin holes uh, that we need to push these wires through. And we need to keep in mind that the curve is towards the inside. And that'll also help us with hooking this up because yes, the data input is on the outer edge. So if we flip this over, VDD is uh, closer to me when I flip it. Data is in the middle and ground is further away. So if I keep that in mind, I should be able twist these really tight at the end and there we go I think at least to get this started it's going to be best to just put uh, put some solder on the end here as I go all right so I'm just gonna heat this up all right let's try that is that on there yeah and next we want data, or data, instead of fighting this. <clears throat> Helping hands. These are a absolute godsend for this sort of work. There we go. Let's uh, change this around and maybe zoom in. You can see all my mistakes. All right, and one more time. And there we go. All right, I pushed that off camera, sorry. Okay, so I've just finished soldering on the first three wires, which gives me, let's double check that we got this right. Um, I'm gonna flip back and forth here. So black coming in should be ground, that's on ground. Uh, the green coming in is our data in, and white is VDD or voltage. And just make sure we didn't screw this up. We're gonna press this in here and just wanna double check that the wires have enough slack that I can tuck them in close. Yeah, I should be able to tuck these in nice and tight here. All right, so when I'm all done here, I'm gonna use some hot glue uh, to hold these in place. I will do that as the last thing and we will also at that point make sure that we have the right angle and match up to those registration marks that we made. But for now, let's see if this actually works. So let's go widescreen and we'll turn on the pack. All right, so if this works, we should have some lights. Yep, we're good. Is, let's reconnect the wand. And we'll make our selections in the EEPROM menu. So 
This one is top menu, press intensify, and one, two, three, four, five. 20 cyclotron LEDs. That's what we want. But just so we go through the options. 12 cyclotron LEDs. So 12 is the default for HasLab. 40 cyclotron LEDs. 40 is what I had. 20 cyclotron LEDs. We want 20. So we're gonna go back up to the top. Saving settings. There we go. EEPROM is saved. And the reason why I wanted to do that now is when I test the lights, they will do the proper sequence for 20 lights, not 40. Okay, that's actually a little better. It's a little slower. All right, so that's good. We, we have the lid mechanism. Oh. Okay, so that's good. The lid mechanism works. So now we just need to solder in the next set of next set of wires, which is going to go out from this and into the next. If you've never stripped wire before, it's, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's like just grip it gently and pull. If it if it doesn't come off the first time, that's okay. Just try it again. After a few times, it'll usually yield and strip itself back. All right, so just like before, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna twist it around. It's like threading a needle. So we're gonna change up the color scheme a little bit. So we came in here with uh, voltage on white because that was just the color I happened to use. I'm gonna go with red at this point. Oops, yep, and I did that wrong. So always double check. If you have to ever solder, just always double check your pins before you solder. All right, so this one is VDD is what we're looking for. That one's gonna come through. All right, and then data in the middle. There we go. You can see what I'm doing now. All right, so we've got our wires being held steady. There'll be a lot of smash cuts in this edit. And we're back up to 320 degrees, so let's start melting some solder. Get a nice little bead at the end of the soldering iron and just let it wick down in there. And there we go. We just want to make sure nothing's touching. That solder should only be wicked into the uh, socket where we put it. We're done with this one. The first one's done. Yay. Oh yeah, this is gonna look so much better. All right, so we've got the second LED jewel wired. This is, it is working. Turn this off now. Now, I did almost screw up pretty bad here. I cut my wires a little bit too short thinking that I was gonna come in on this side and actually I was 90 degrees to that. So next time I am going to be a little more cautious about how much slack I leave on the wires. The good news is uh, we're gonna make this work. I'm just not particularly happy with uh, what I just did. Kind of mad at myself. Okay, that's in just enough. Uh, the fit's not great, but all right. This time I'm gonna be a little more cautious. So what would we need? We need to come out and back in this side, back in this side and remember data in is on the outer edge. So I'm going to make sure I leave enough slack this time for the wires to come in this way. I don't want to leave a ton of slack, but I do need some slack. So same as before, I'm just gonna strip, strip these back. Don't need a lot, just a bit. And we just twist it to a point. Twist it 
twist. Okay, so now do the process again. Red for positive, green for data, and then white for negative. And so long as we keep that pattern going, we're all good. I'll double check that. Ground is white. And we're going to the DI pin. That's the other thing, is we just want to double check every now and then. All right, I think I'm getting a little bit better at this with the tinier wires. And snip off the excess and double check our fit. Fit check. All right, we're good. Should be able to tuck that in there. All right, let's, uh, let's grab the extra wire. And we need our output. Let's grab some of that. All right, test these suckers around. Lot of men. All right. I got VDD. I drop my wires. Okay. Next is data and then ground. As always, we double check. Red is coming in first, that's voltage. We are going to the DO pin for data out, and then we have ground, okay. My main thing with wanting to snip these is I don't want extra wire hanging off because I want there to be complete separation between each of these each of these uh, little nodes. All right, we're getting there. We've got 15 out of 20. All right, so we've got the last one. And same as before, we're going to make sure we've got this. Okay, that's going in the right direction for the arc. Uh, looks like we could do... Let's see, what can we do to get this in here? Ah, just set that in there. All right, like I said, I just... I want those in just enough to hold it, and we'll figure out where the wire needs to go. Remember, we need to go to the outside here. And there's already a wire track here, so let's get this last one here. Got you there. So if we trace this around and give it a little extra slack, cut off right here. All right, so last one, data in. 
Make sure we're working on the right side here. VDD is this one. Then we have data. Always, we double check. This is data in. We've got ground, we've got power. Okay. Let's check. We've got yep, wires are in, they're not moving. Let's snip our excess. Now, now for the fun part. So many different colors. All right, so we're gonna put the, uh, this is what happens with the thicker wires as we end up with one little strand that always goes astray. That's two. Now let's get the third and we'll try not to, let's see. I want these to lay flat once I put them in. So everything's soldered. Now it's just the question of does it work? All right, so the good news is the cyclotron is working. All the lights work, we've got 20 LEDs. Looks like the pace is pretty good. So I'm going to first get the, I think we're pretty good here. I'm going to get this stuff um, glued in. So we've got everything sort of dry fit here. It uh, looks like it's working. I did pretty much what I said. I took the uh, circuit boards and before I put the lenses back in, I used some hot glue uh, to help keep the PCBs in place. So once they were immobilized, I was able to finish routing all the wires and put the lenses back in place. So now everything should be held fast. And the last bit is to basically reassemble both halves, uh, route the wires uh, off to the side and get this thing put back together. And then we'll see what it looks like with the uh, lenses fully installed. We've got everything reassembled and just held loosely in place. And we're gonna see what this looks like now that everything's pretty much back to normal. And as you can see, that is nicely diffused since the LEDs are back where they should be. It is just one nice diffuse streak. This is, this is exactly what I had hoped for uh, when I first started putting the uh, when I first put the NeoPixel into place. All right, so let's look at the video game mode. So I have my wand started and we switch to slime mode. That looks beautiful. That power cell is so bright. And we go into blue and you can definitely tell it's blue even though the lenses are red. Uh, it still pretty much comes through as blue. And we have the amber for the Mason. We go back into vent mode for red, and that is white, uh, believe it or not. So you can see the power cell is pure white. These still have a little bit of a tint to them, but for the most part, you can, you can tell what color it is. And then back to normal mode. So let's do our mode switch, and we'll go into the menu. We'll select 1984 mode, and we'll go back up exit the menu. All right, so now we should see a nice glow. Oh yeah, there we go, perfect. So 
as I showed earlier, I had used the EEPROM menu to switch my LEDs from 40 back down to 20. Uh, if you're first installing this after the HasLab equipment, you'll be going from 12 to 20. And that's pretty much it for the uh, config. So basically, I didn't have to do any other changes. The software has already been uh, flashed and has the new features. Now let's see what happens if we do a... All right, let's go to full stream. Try that again. Yep, there we go. Nice. And let's, we'll do that one more time and I'll hold it up. Yep, you see the jewel works. So basically we have reconnected everything the way it should be. So I'm gonna go back into the menu. Switch to Afterlife again. And let's see what that looks like again with the startup sequence. We've got a nice little jitter as it starts up and spins around. I think that's a pretty good pace. The Fruto, uh, Fruto technology cyclotron LEDs have been installed and that's in the lid only and everything's put back together. All right, and that's all I got to show. Take care.